I saw this amazing absolute value system of equations and I had to solve it. So there are a few things to keep in mind with absolute value. The first is just what is absolute value? Students love to say things like, oh, absolute value is always positive. And that's true, but it's true because of what absolute value is. Absolute value represents distance from zero on a number line. So in an equation like the absolute value of x equals 10, what we're interested in is which points are 10 units away from zero on the number line. Of course, one of those answers is 10 itself. 10 is 10 units away from zero on a number line. But another answer is negative 10. Distance is always positive, so negative 10 is also 10 units from zero. And since that distance is always positive, so is absolute value. The second thing to keep in mind is what we call casework. When we solve absolute value equations, we need to consider those two different cases. What if the thing inside the absolute value bars is positive, is to the right of zero on the number line, but what if it's negative? Now, when we have two different quantities like this inside absolute value bars, that casework, considering what if one is positive, what if one is negative, what if the other one is positive, what if the other one is negative, can quickly become unwieldy. So what we wanna try to do here is be a little more clever about what we can determine about A and B. So let's try to do that now. For example, look at this first equation. The absolute value of a plus one times b is equal to negative 33. For sure, I don't know what a and b are in this instance. Like I could start taking some guesses, but you know, they would just be guesses. What I can say though, is that the absolute value of a plus one whatever a is must be positive. And the only way to take a positive quantity and multiply by something and get a negative result is if the something we multiplied by was itself negative. And so this confirms for me, oh, I guess b has to be negative here. Again, that's the only way we could get a negative 33 as the result from that first equation. Similarly, in the second equation, the absolute value of b, which we know b itself is negative, but the absolute value will be positive, times a minus two equals three. Well, if this is positive and my result is positive, a minus two must also be positive. So let's jot that down as well. a minus two is definitely greater than zero. Now, how does this help us actually solve this system of equations? Well, again, go back to the first equation for a moment. If we know that a minus two is greater than zero, then for sure we can say a itself must be greater than two. And if a is greater than two, a plus one is also greater than two, meaning the absolute value there isn't actually doing anything. We can treat it like regular old parentheses instead of absolute value. So a plus one in regular old parentheses times b equals negative 33. Let's distribute that b. That's going to give us a times b plus b itself is what's equal to negative 33. Going into the second equation though, we know b is negative. So another way to think about the absolute value of a negative is it's actually going to cancel out that negative somehow. The way that you cancel out a negative is by multiplying by another negative. So we can actually treat the absolute value of a known negative quantity as simply the negative of that quantity. In this case, simply treating it as negative b. That negative b, of course, is being multiplied by a minus two, and the result there is three. So we're gonna do the same thing we did a second ago. We're going to engage in some distribution, and that's going to give us negative a b plus two b is equal to three. At this point, that means we're dealing with a regular old system of equations. No absolute value necessary. We just wanna try and come up with a clever way to cancel out a variable in this system. And you can tell if we simply add these two equations together, the AB and the negative AB are going to make zero, leaving us with B plus two B or three B equals negative 33 plus three, which is negative 30. From here, we can divide by three, divide by three, and that that lets us know b must be negative 10. And now all we have to do is take that information back to one of our two original equations, plug it in and solve for the other variable. If b is negative 10, the absolute value of negative 10 is 10. And so it's actually 10 times a minus two that's equal to three. We can divide both sides of this equation by 10 to get rid of the 10 part. And that leaves us a minus two must equal three tenths or 0 0.3. And then of course, to isolate A to get that A by itself, we add two on both sides and we get that A is 2.3. 
And so there you have it, we have solved our system of absolute value equations, not necessarily by considering four different cases, but by trying to be a little bit clever to eliminate some of those cases, and then doing the things that we always do for a system of equations problem.